Guys, it's been a while. It's time. I want to get into this and show you what I've been working on. Uh, I've been taking a few courses with, uh, or a course with Unreal Sensei. Um, here's a scene that I've been working on through all the stuff that he's taught uh, in the course. And we'll basically, there's going to be a few stages of this. One, I'm going to go over the, the daytime scene. Then I'm going to go over um, the nighttime scene. And then I'm going to explain everything that I have learned and done and how I've set up different levels um, as well as organizing out the files and things like that. Okay? So, let's get into day the daytime. So here's the scene. Uh, I probably should have put my face on the other side here. Let me go ahead and just move my face just, just for this part real quick. So, here's the daytime scene. Uh, Maybe a little laggy. Um, I'm using nanite uh, meshes uh, right now. Um, and most of the stuff in the scene. So here, here it is. It's, it's, it's a desert town. And I'm, I'm using the medieval assets uh, that, I, that he recommended using throughout the course. Um, and we'll just kind of go through the town here real quick. Try to move in as, as slowly as possible. Kind of give you an idea of kind of view of each one of the houses. Some of the different uh, parts of the scene. We have a, a blueprint that was pulled from the uh, one of the medieval packs that they have. See how the windmill's moving? Blueprint. We have a, sp a spine bridge. It's spline. Spline. Okay. Got more houses. Take you up here. Check out the other windmill and stuff like that going in. Then we'll get the back view of this as well. A little bit more. Gra Is that grandiose? Is that a word? Get a little view from the back side of this town. All right, let me speed it up. We'll go take us over here to the other the other side of the... Oh, I can't speed us up. Take us to the other side of the village over here. I've got a few other... It's actually been really cool over there on the on the back end of it where that other windmill is. Make a, some type of, like, farm garden of some kind. All right? So that's that. There's some there's some of my assets that I use. I can turn those off later. But, all right, so here there's that. Now, head back over here. And here is the nighttime. Boom, baby! Looking good. Oh, wow, my freaking camera. Sorry, guys, my camera thing was in the way for most of that. But here's the nighttime. This texture streaming pool is freaking having an overload. But here's the nighttime scene as well. I'm going to take you through this. Got lighting uh, set up. Um... And all the different things, and if you can see on the right side, it's probably kind of above my head, how there's a uh, eye off, press F, and there's the eye on, which between the two scenes. Here, take a look at some of this. Windmill, everything. Back over here, check it out. I probably should have turned down the actual, like, uh, what is that? Like the act, how much light that actually put off at the uh, initial point of the light, which again I can do that at a later um, project. And a lot of this is just kind of working through, and because um, there's no such thing as perfection when it comes to this stuff, um, but it's just getting better every single time I go through and make different things like that. I'm down here, the bottom part of it. Little nice little uh, fishing huts over here. These little 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 huts. Super cool. Take you guys back up over here. Got lighting and stuff over here to these other assets. Other portion of the village. Little tree movement. At the bridge. This bridge is pretty locked in. Oh yeah, the moon as well. Check this out. We've got the moon over here as well. Kind of to top it off. Oh, it's got reflections. Yeah. Looking good, guys. Looking good. So, let's go over everything that I've kind of... I've, I've learned throughout this process. Uh, going through. I've spent... 25, maybe 30 hours on going through this, reading through different documents and stuff. Um, uh, this is full screen face. 
reading through different documents uh, and stuff on um, UE's UE5 or Unreal Engine's uh, it's docs that dot Unreal Engine dot com slash 5.1 so it goes over everything that's going on in the engine. I've read through different docs on that. I'm trying to fix some of my own issues as well as like going through the comments section on with Unreal and Sensei's master class that I've, I've been taking. Um, I told you guys I was going to update you. I don't know if it was on this main channel or not, but this is going to be the main channel I'm going to post everything on. On top of gameplay and things like that as we're working through and actually just playing games, right? Because I'm doing both right now. Um, but here, let me put, pull us back up to the main display. Let me move my face cam, and let's go through some of this stuff. So, when it comes to setup and uh, different things like that, we've got uh, these two different level instances that you guys can see right here and here, right? And I have different, at and the, the main level itself. So, if I have an asset set up on this main level, so I'll, 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 let me come over here real quick. So, let's say this post right here, right? This post is set up on this main level right here. It's called Persistent Level. The overall level, this post is set up on it, right? Now, if we turn off the daylight and turn on the nightlight, the lantern show up as well as the light source itself, okay? So during the daytime, they're gone. Nighttime, they're on, right? So I have two different assets set up. I have uh, assets set up differently based on the the different levels or, or the scenes or whatever you want to call them right uh when it comes to organization and things like that I've, I've went through and here let me make this a little bigger uh i don't know how it may be a little difficult for you guys to see hopefully not but for the uh, so we've got all the bridges in this file and i tried to keep everything as organized as possible so if i needed to make big iterations on different things like let's say the bridges for instance right i say okay the bridges I want all of these bridges to be set up on the nighttime scene, right? So I can click all these bridges, and we'll, we'll kind of use this as an example. Only for nighttime. Let's say they roll up the bridges or something, right? All these bridges, I right-click this, uh, go into, let's see here. Yeah, all these bridges. I should be able to right-click this and move current actor. Oh, wow, it's not letting me actually move these actors. Huh. Won't let me move this. Well, that's a bad example then. I'll have to figure out why that's not working. Maybe I can find a singular house that would work as an example. Let's try this house. Right? This house, right click. Won't let me do that either. Huh. Well, basically what should happen is I click a different I click I click an asset. So this tree. Maybe it's because this this is persistent. I click this tree, then I'm able to move it exactly where I want it to go, right? Whether I would just want it to be, oh, right here. Why is it set to that instead of that? Whatever. I can move this tree to just daytime, for instance, right? Is it floating? That's a floating tree. Whoops. How I didn't catch that. But. Okay. That's okay. But anyway, so this tree right here. Let's right. I click the tree. Move actor to selected location. So daytime. So now it is on daytime, okay? This actor specifically is on the daytime scene, okay? Move it to nighttime if I want to. I can't. Oh, it's because it's not visible. Now I can move it. That's why it wouldn't let me. That's fine. But anyway, it's um, located on the daytime now. So if we click off the daytime and nighttime, boom, it's gone. That makes sense why the bridges weren't actually, like, showing up. I'm used to my camera being here. I switched locations, but... That's why that, that's why the bridges weren't weren't moving over. So we can use the bridge example now. Let's click off of that. Click this tree again. Click this tree. Let's move it back to the persistent level. So move this actor back to here so it'll work in both the nighttime and the daytime. Cool. So let's do the same thing. Whoa! I didn't know I could zoom in and out. Okay, the Z key and the C key will zoom me in and out. That's cool. I didn't know that. 
Okay, cool. We're back. There's so many things with this engine that I, I learn every single time I, I roll up in this in this thing. So, next, let's go into the, the this other thing that I've learned. So, like I said, I have all these things pre-organized and stuff. We'll go back into... Um, click off of housing. Click off of all the rock faces. Bridges. Here. Select all these bridges. Now that nighttime is available, I'll move all of these actors into nighttime. Thinking about it, give it a sec. Having an aneurysm. Come on, baby. Alright, we're back. We're back. So now, I select off of nighttime, all the bridges are gone. Nighttime is visible. Well, look at that. These uh, these little uh, the 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 magical village people of the mountains, of the dusty mountains, create bridges at night, right? So that's something that's something else we can do. Let me toggle that back on. Look here to here. Let's move all these back to persistent. So it, whether it's daytime or nighttime, they're active. Okay. So for houses, um, we 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 were taught modular design. Which is super cool. Okay. What's modular design? Modular design is being able to take, let's say, these four walls, the door, and this fence piece right here. So, right? So, four walls, fence piece, a roof, and being able to create all of these different things. Like, see how this house is made up out of... And I've grouped all these houses, too. So, let me move this house out real quick. Just as an example, and we'll just, like, control C, control C all the way back, right? Ooh, wow, this is my my PC is is taking a hit right now. Let me turn off the nighttime scene. Maybe it'll fix it up a little bit. So, right click here, go to un un. I can either ungroup all the assets, and now they're each individual pieces, right? So each one of these things are different pieces, right? Back back. Let's regroup them. Or what I can do is if we want to just make modifications to an asset, uh, whoops, I didn't regroup it. There you go, now it's regrouped. Or, if I just want to make modifications within this locked group, I can unlock it, and now I can make modifications to this locked group. So it stays, they stay grouped together, which I thought was super cool. Let's say, you know what, for this house, I want this, I want to fix this, specific. I want to make this a longer piece, and I'm going to get, make this a longer piece, right? Fix this up, boom. I've got a ladder that goes onto the roof. You know what? We don't need the ladder anymore. We'll get rid of that asset. Yes, yes. But boom, the ladder's gone. This is extended over. And I want... I want this piece of wood to be twice the size. So then we can we can make those changes. A girthy piece of wood. How about it? Boom. You know what? This looks ridiculous, but that's okay. They, they really man, messed up this house, guys. So, but that's okay. We've got all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. And then guess what? Boom. Lock it. Now, we're back. Wow, wow. And guess what? We can make multiple of them. Freaking crazy sick. So let me backtrack on all those different changes that we made. Got it, got it, got it. Regrouped. Put that house back where it's supposed to be. Boom. Sweet. We've got that. What else did we do? Let me turn off uh, nighttime. So, oh, check this out. So, I thought this was sick. You actually have to... This is what it looks like on the opposite end of it. Right? What this scene actually looks like is this. Isn't that wicked? So, I don't... Apparently, this is... Whenever you use meshes and um, different static meshes or nanite meshes that have these, like, see-through things... You need to put objects, like I use these. He told us, he was teaching us, like, you can use these spheres and then put a texture on them. So, when shadows hit it, when, like, the sun right there hits these from, let's go, let's go down here real quick, right? When the sun hits those from this angle, it casts shadows still. There's one thing that I couldn't figure out, and maybe if you guys know, that'd be sweet if you could tell me. Right here. So, do you see the mountain? Guys. That's not the mountain, right? That is not what this is. That is what these are right here. These mountains right here, that's what that is. So for, I could not figure out how to 
get these to project onto the water. I couldn't figure it out. Folders and collapse them real quick. Okay. Yeah, but I couldn't figure it out. So if you guys know how to do that too, that would be sweet. Um, what else do we know? What else do we know? Oh, it's using the assets wisely. So, see all these up here? They're trees. Check this out. I use the trees that sway, that have the swaying animation as vegetation that's going up the side of the mountain. These trees grow out of the side of the mountain all the time, right? Boom, baby. I just thought it looked pretty cool. Obviously, we could have done some other stuff and gotten the, like, the foliage tool, which, here, let me pull up the foliage tool real quick. Uh, I think it's shift tool. Yeah, foliage tool. And, you know, I could have selected different assets and things, like here's Here's rocks, and here's some tree leaves, and here's some leaves. I could have selected all these different ones that I wanted, right? I have the little foliage tool, and I could have went, and I could have painted foliage exactly where we wanted it. You see all this? These little rocks and leaves and stuff like that? Control Z, get rid of them. And I could have, oh, oh, man, we need some more stuff right here. Bah, 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 bah. Guess what? We could have painted all that mess on there. Look, terrible right now. But, so... Learned how to use the foliage tool. That was pretty cool, guys. Uh, properly. I guess that was through a lot of different things. Um, yeah, what is this? So, there's a few different things. Like, I know I know Unreal Engine has a different way to do, like, use as a new water tool that they have. And there's different plugins and things like that. Because right now, we're using planar, what is it, planar reflection. A planar reflection and a water plane. A water plane is just basically a flat. I'll go underneath of this. You can't even see it from the other side. But it's basically like a flat surface. There, you can see it from here. A flat uh, piece of static mesh. And then you put a texture on it that simulates water moving. And then for the reflection, it's just that. It is a piece of glass, basically, that you put on top of the water in a perfect location. So watch this. I move it slightly. It literally is just a piece of glass, basically. That goes over top of the water. That's what it looks like before. That's what it looks like after. Which is so weird. I know there's a better way that we can do that. And I, I've seen different uh, videos and stuff. What, what, what I would like to do is get very good. Because water, in my opinion, is top tier. Right? Top tier if you get good water in a game. What game has great water? One, Assassin's Creed. The Assassin's Creed games. I would say all of them. I don't. I don't know. I haven't played past. Um, what is it? Unity. But Assassin's Creed has it. Has a great one. Black Flag, fantastic. And and also Sea of Thieves, right? Great water. And they use, if I'm not mistaken, they use like collision, like when it, when when it collides with things, they use a t a two D texture that like loosens some of the load on the PC itself to create the illusion of a splash with a 2D texture so it doesn't, like, bog down an Xbox or a PC or stuff like that. And I think that's the same thing with the new Need for Speed does as well with, like, their, like, little neon lights and crap like that. But but it looks really good. And that's exactly what, you know, I, I, I want to try to get good at and, and hopefully one of my future scenes... Why is this doing this? See this water? It's, like, echoing here. It's so weird. But that's all I like to do in some of these uh, future uh, scenes and things like that. Um, what else? Oh, you know, we can mess with the lighting, you know, right here. We can time a day, flip it around, make it look all good at different angles. And that was another thing we had to do is backtrack a few things. I really liked how the lighting was with that. Um, oh, combined these different assets. So a lot of these different assets are actually a blueprint mass created assets, right? So... Instead of grouping these, so there's a benefit too, right? So I created these using, all these are made up of groups, so we can easily modify, so they're, so they're very modular, right? So I can easily modify it without going having to go into the blueprint itself to mess with the asset itself, right? I can just right-click, it here, it unlock, and I can move these assets around freely, right? Cool. Well, with the mount, here, let me read. Yeah. <laughs> with the mountain, let's go into here. If, let's 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 go over to these assets over here, right? Because I have all these hidden. With the mountain, 
Where is it? Testing assets. Here we go. If he's visible. Okay, so here's all, all of these right here. All of this, right? Is these. That's all it is. It's literally just these assets for all these mountains, which is crazy. Like, look how big this one is. This one is freaking monstrous, right? And this is how a lot of games games do it, if you don't know, you know? Look, see that? It's the same thing as that, right? That, same as that. Where's another one at? Same as that, that. But it's just giving you, when there's so much going on in a scene, a lot of times people don't recognize or notice the variations of the terrain or that they are the same, right? Like, this asset is the same as that one, right? But there's different variants of it, and it's, like, twisted and turned and things like that. But let's go back over here. So, what... How did we make... Get get to this, right? We got to this. So, we use this piece right here, if I'm not mistaken. This piece. Buddy. This piece? No, no, I think it was this piece. Wait, I, it was one of these two pieces. But anyway, let's just go into the blueprint itself so you can see how, like, a mass of a blueprint looks. Right? Uh, construction viewport. So I should... Now it's been a minute. Yeah, okay. Perfect. So instead of it being... So from my understanding, this is more performant doing it like this. And if, if anybody in the comments knows, otherwise, let me know. But I'm pretty sure using a, a BP mass of objects is more performant and easier to pull... Um, and manipulate. Plus, it's easier to do in mass, right? So if I make a change to this one object, it'll make a change to all the objects in the world. I do know that. So, let's say with all the objects in the world, I want this piece right here to be pulled out, right? So every object in the world now, and we're gonna, I'm gonna just do this to show you guys. Hmm, I hope I can put this back. Very well. Otherwise, it's gonna, I'm gonna look real dumb. But anyway, so... This right here, right? I really don't want to... I don't... I don't want to do that. Here, let's do something that's not as in intrusive. So this right here. Let's copy this. I can just drag this straight up, actually. So. Uh, so. Here. I'll drag a duplicate of it straight up. Did it work? Absolutely. I have, like, a little rock or something on this mess. Okay, here we go. So this... And uh, it's why is it not working? Oh, uh, let me let me put it to world the world view instead. Alt and drag. Okay, there we go. So now we have this one and this one. We have two different variants of this object. Fine for some. That's okay. Whatever. We'll can we'll, we'll compile this. Okay. We'll go back into this world. Boom! It's sticking out of this object right here. And let's find some more of these, right? So it automatically changes and. Uh, it will automatically change every object in the world that is using that other one. Boom! Here it is. Look. There it is sticking up out of the corner of that. Again, I used a ton of these. Let's find another one. There's a lot of these different planes and stuff like that. I mean, you guys get the idea, right? As long as you make a modification, that's a cool thing about, like, that's a cool thing about turning these into uh, these these blueprint like combined assets is I can make a change to this one and it will change all of them in the world. So it's the same thing with like these houses. If I made these houses and modified them into one of those assets and create instead of creating groups, which made it easier to modify on the fly, I can make this into this mass blueprint asset, which I can't remember the correct terminology. Again, if you know what the terminology is, please tell me. There you go. Modified, compile, and it'll fix all that. Um, and I could have made this to where all these houses that look like this, and I could have modified the chimney to go there, compiled it in that big mass blueprint, and all the chimneys would be fixed, right? Or if I wanted to apply a different visual effect to it or something like that, I should be able to do that in the blue in that in that mass blueprint as well. Let's say I have a hundred of these houses it's not very realistic for me to grab groups of these houses and scatter these across the world, right? It's it's more realistic for me to get um, uh, this modified version of this house 
uh, in, in, a, in like one blueprint and then make that change as a whole, right? Let's say I know that all the reflection, all the different, all the different tiles on these houses, and let's say we have a daytime house and we have a, uh, we have a daytime cycle and we have a, an inf a inferno cycle in the map, right? To where the map is on fire. It's obviously a lot more realistic for me to just take this one house and this one tree and then make a mass blueprint of it to where when I modify it, it catches all those things, all those assets in the entire world automatically get modified. Way more time. Um, uh, it helps workflow, right? Cool. Um, what else we got here? Again, these are, all these are the same, the, the same object. I just grabbed it, modified it, stretched it out, messed with it. So bridges. This was super cool. And, um... I want to learn how to make these, and hopefully within the tutorial section, he kind of goes over and how he just how to make these. I got you know I got these cool little lamps. I modified these lamps and turned these lamps into a um, what is it converted? I some other sort into a, I converted this. The, these were two separate pieces, right? I converted these two separate pieces into a static mesh, right? And then I just copied them throughout the world. So I think it's Control B. Yeah, it pulls it up. So, SM, Lantern, did I spell that? Lantern? Yeah, I spelled that right. Lantern Post. Yeah. Lantern Post. What it, what it originally was, was, oh, static mesh. You guys see these? I, think you guys can see. I, I know they're a little small for you guys, because I'm on this ultra wide. And then we can go into content, and then type in Lantern. What, it, what this originally was, was these two assets. So check this out. And this is, isn't just with this asset. It's with a ton of different things that we, I did in the world, right? Oh, that's that post again. Let's just type in post. I put port. Post. Mm, I think that it is... Wooden post. Here we go. So this is what it was, Right? Is this asset with where is it at this post so these two big boys and we turn it into these little these little modular design people being smart with your assets you know i grabbed this i shrunk this son of a gun down i grabbed this made it smaller made it smaller and then turned it this is a very quick way of doing it obviously drug it inside and turned it uh, into its own little um, static mesh. Named it, and now whenever I want to, I can grab this son of a gun and put it in the world. Amazing. Amazing. Grab that. Get rid of all these. I can uh, grab them. There we go. Cool. Oh, splines. I think it's called spline. Let's pull, let's pull it up. Um, spline? I put pline. Maybe just bridge. 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 Oh, I have it as a static mesh. Okay, bridge, BP, spline, bridge. So basically, this is crazy cool. And you can do this do this with fence. I want to learn how to do it with fences too. But what, what it does is it has these three different static meshes, okay? Because if you can see this bridge... Has more than just one pattern in this bridge, right? So here's two planks. You don't get the same two planks until right here, right? These two planks combined is right here. And it's also based on how this bridge is stretched and kind of moved around as well. Because I can grab this and I can down. This it's not very performant at all moving this stuff because it actually when I move this one piece of the bridge, it changes the textures of the whole bridge. Watch. See how it changed look right here at this bottom part of it? Watch this. See how it's changing those those different um static meshes within the bridge to meet the criteria that I've kind of given it by grabbing the center of this point. And that's kind of what splines do. Is you can grab if you can create different objects. I don't know what's up with this mountain. It's kind of whack. But you can create different objects and combine them together with different static meshes. 
or create a spline blueprint, right? Or a blueprint and then put different objects within that blueprint or static meshes, objects. Um, and then set your parameters to where it will change out those different static meshes based on how that object turns, moves, how long it is, and things like that. And you can set different parameters like that. And it's super cool. Super cool because it's easy for you or artists or, or uh, it's easy for artists, environmental designers to mod make modifications to the world and create things without me having to grab, you know, let's say this is 40 pieces of a bridge. Well, guess what? This is one bridge that can be moved around and tugged and shuffled around to create this, which is incredible, right? And you can do this. With the, I could do make a spline for a home, right? Or I could grab this, and it would randomly, like, pull out and, like, you know, create a triple-decker house, you know? Something like this, or, you know what I mean? And I, you can do that with so many different things, right? Um, so that's that's very very cool and and it's the same thing with like you could do that with size modifications to objects you know so because I've been kind of going through a lot of this stuff in my head this this bridge is kind of whack right now but you know I can I could you could do it with like side modifications so like oh okay when the object gets so big with that mesh um, then it will turn into different versions or variations of that object I wonder how performant that is or if that messes with performance. Um, long, like, very incremental, you know, very incremental performance check. I don't, I don't know. Again, if you guys know, that's, please let me know in the comments. Um, but, man, guys, there's, there's so much that has been done and, uh, modifications that I can do to, to the mountains themselves as well. And I could change, I could go over here to the main, um, the testing, um, like, pieces, uh, textures, of the mountains, like, and, and change them all to look, have a red tint to them. It would make the change go across all of them, you know? If I find the, the, the parent, um, the, the parent, um, uh, what is it, material for all of these textures, whatever the parent is, and then with those parents, right, you can create different children off of it, and then if you change the main base of the parent, right, if you change the parent, if you can't, here's the parent, and if you have like let's say three different children off of that, right? And if you make changes to the parent blueprint, right? And it looks kind of weird for me. Uh, make ch changes to these, then all three of these are going to have the same changes as whatever the parent is, right? Um, especially when it comes to, like color variations, or let's say you have full world changes that you want to do, and all the trees turn to like an autumn color or something like that, right? Or let's say you have, which I, I want to do, and I, I, they have this in Ashes of Creation too, which is really cool, is they have seasonal changes within the game, right? And it's literally like a slider that this guy has made within Ashes of Creation that as the slider changes, right, these trees in the world, let me go back over here real quick, the trees within the world, right, start changing colors slowly, like, Starts changing to like a, a, a slight orangish color or a, a brownish color, and then the leaves fall off. And then as snow hits the ground, it, it like gets rid of those leaves and they get they dissipate or whatever. And um, gosh, guys, there's so much cool stuff that you can do with this, you know. And this obviously this took me way too long to do, way too long to do, right? But um, there's been a huge growth in taking the time and doing the research and. And really figuring out all the different things that you can do and just how you can wisely use one asset, right? This one, like one asset for so many different things, right? I can very smart, very wisely use like this, right? For, for so many different things. So I could have, like kind of how they're spiky. Obviously the texture is distorted, but I could have used these for like... Um, of those things that hang off the ceilings in caves. You, you get what I'm saying, right? So, I think that's pretty much everything that I have to show you guys um, uh, for today. You know, obviously, there's plenty of other things that we could have gotten into and made changes to. And I can make this scene darker, you know. Nighttime, nighttime lighting. Post processing real quick, and let's turn this down a little bit, right? 
Um, so we could have made a lot of different changes and stuff to these worlds. But all in all, I think this was a big W and well worth the time and effort put in. Um, ooh. Guys, we're getting closer. We're getting closer. But thanks for watching. If you made it all the way through the 35-minute video of all the different changes and variations and everything that, that's, that's been learned and just shown off this first um, village um, that uh, I finally ended up completing, um, give you a little thumbs up and make sure you stop by the stream here soon. We're going to be playing Hunt Showdown with the new event that's going on. So that and I'll probably be streaming a little bit of World of Warcraft too here soon. So, peace out, guys. Till next time.